Hey, it's Carmen with Real Weight Loss Formula. I wanted to come on here today and talk to you guys about um, weight loss and plateauing. And maybe I wanted to go through five different reasons why, if you're if you're plateaued or you're not losing weight, five reasons why um, that scale might be stuck or you might be plateauing. Um, this actually stemmed from a question I got from one of my clients who did a refresh. And during the three-day refresh, three-day cleanse, she lost like four or five pounds in three days, and she had she's hit this she's hit this plateau where since then she hasn't lost any more weight. So I was kind of asking, hey, what's the deal? So I want to go through five different reasons why the scale might not be moving in your direction. Um, number one, and this is probably the most common reason, um, mistracking your calories, user error. So when you're losing weight, the biggest part to losing weight is being in a calorie deficit, which means burning more calories than you are, um, in, you know, putting in your mouth, basically. And so that's actually even more important than the types of food, the quality of food. I was in a conversation just a couple of days ago where someone talked about if you're eating carbs, you can't lose weight. Um, well, that's just not true. If you are eating less calories and carbs than you are um, you know, you're, you're going to lose weight, calories in, calories out. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try to put good food in your body. But the biggest mistake that I see people making is they mistrack or they don't track their calories properly. And so when someone's tracking their calories, they're using one of two different ways. They're either using the color-coded container systems or MyFitnessPal. In this case, this person is using MyFitnessPal. And so when you're using MyFitnessPal, a couple key things to MyFitnessPal is an app that you have on your phone. And you track literally your food with it. And it keeps track of your calories. It keeps track of your macros. It keeps track of all of that in there for you. And so a couple things to do with MyFitnessPal. You need to track everything that either goes in your mouth, goes in a bowl, goes in a dish, goes in a pot, goes in a pan. Um, everything, everything, everything. A lot of people track their main meals, but they don't track their mindless snacking or they don't track, you know, let's just say they're cooking and they throw a little dash of olive oil in the pan or some butter in the pan. Um, those things oftentimes get left out of tracking. Well, if you know anything about olive oil and butter, it's like a hundred calories or more, depending on what kind of oil you're using, um, per tablespoon. Well, it doesn't take a lot to equal one tablespoon of butter doesn't take a lot to equal one tablespoon of oil. And just going over your calories by 100 extra calories a day can actually keep you plateaued and from losing weight. And so, or let's just say you're making the kids lunch and you're making them a pretzel, you're making them a sandwich and that sandwich has peanut butter on it and you lick off the peanut butter and jam that's on there. You're licking 50 to 150 calories in one lick, depending on how much peanut butter and jelly you have on that knife. Um, you're putting you're putting pretzels on the plate for your one of your kids, and one of those pretzels goes in your mouth, and then two go in your mouth. So it, every the, the the key with my the key to having success with my fitness pal or with any kind of tracking system is tracking every single thing you eat. So that's number one. You got to track what you put in your mouth. Um, everything, everything, whether everything. There is nothing you put in your mouth that doesn't get tracked. Even a piece of gum, a mint, whatever it is. Um, you need to track it. Number two, not enough rest. We just did a call um, two weeks back. We did part one and part two, 10 simple steps to be able to have big results in 2017. And one of those steps, one of those keys, one of those simple things was getting enough rest. Um, studies have shown that if you're not getting seven hours a night of rest, it can actually slow or halt your weight loss. That someone who is getting seven hours or more of rest per night will lose twice as much weight as someone who's not. And so making sure you're getting the proper amount of rest will help your body lose weight. It'll help it stay out of metabolic grogginess, which is what it goes into when our bodies are sleep deprived. Metabolic grogginess. Doesn't it just sound like, I don't know, it sounds awful. So make sure you're getting at least seven hours a night of sleep. Again, that can really jack you up and keep you from losing weight. Um, keep your body from dropping fat is actually what it does. And this particular person only has 11 pounds left to lose for, before they get to their goal. So your body's like hanging on to those fat cells that you have left. So really making sure that you're getting rested. It only takes four days of not getting enough sleep for your body to go into 
metabolic grogginess, which your metabolism slows down, um, and your body doesn't release fat as well, and just all those things. Even if you're working out, if you are not rested and you're working out, your body will only burn half as many calories as someone who is actually rested. So rest plays a huge part in you losing weight. Um, number three, um, <laughs> if you are a girl, there is that time of the month. We have that time of the month every single, unless you're too young to have it, or unless you, you're you mature in age and you went through that um, time change where you don't have it. But if you are a woman watching this, you know that there's one time a month where your body swells and it bloats. And for me and a lot of my clients, what I have noticed is that week, that time of the month, there's like one specific week where I will not lose weight. And a lot of times I might even gain a pound during that week. No matter how on point my workouts are, no matter how on point my diet is, I just don't seem to drop weight during that week. But what I have noticed is through tracking and just, you know, learning my body and how my body works is the week after that time of the month, that one week of the month, um, my body will typically make up for that weight loss um, for that week and the week prior. So I will typically have a three to five pound weight loss the week um, when I was losing weight, I will have a three to five pound weight loss the following week after that one week of the month. So if it's that time of the month, don't stress out. I used to get really stressed out and I, I really felt like, oh my gosh, I'm jacking this up, I'm screwing this up. How come, I, how come the scale's not moving? And after just a couple months of tracking my body, learning my body, I figured out, oh, that's why. So, um, yeah, and most of us go through that. It just, it is what it is. Um, number four, being consistent. Consistency is key. And again, what I see a lot of people do is they're good for a couple days and then they're not. And then they're good for a couple days and they have a bad day. Then they're good for a couple days and they have a bad day. Consistency is key when you are losing weight. Momentum is key when you are losing weight. Imagine being in a car and the cars, imagine someone's pushing a car, right? There's like three or four people behind the car and they're going to push the car. And there's someone inside of the car steering it, but they're not like really driving it. Now imagine these people pushing the car and every time they get it going, the person in the car steps on the brakes. And then they get it going again and the person in the car steps on the brakes. So when you are not consistent with your diet or consistent with your workouts, more importantly your diet though, that is what you are doing. Every time you get a little bit of momentum, you're slamming on the brakes. So I would tell you, be consistent. Um, really hunker down. If you're having one of those times where you have just not lost weight, um, give it seven days of being consistent and committed for seven days and see what your body does. Don't go over your calories at all. Get the proper amount of rest. Um, really just be consistent and committed with that. And the last one is as you get closer to your goal weight, your body is less forgiving. So yes, you can still lose those two pounds a week, but you have to be more on point and more on track with your calories, with your rest, with all of that stuff. Um, because when, when you know you have 100 or 50 pounds left to lose, you can mess up a little bit and still lose two pounds a week. But again, as you get closer, you gotta be a little more on point, a little more, your body is just a little less forgiving. So those five keys right there, I promise you, if you just follow those five keys, even if you're at a plateau, um, you are going to be able to bust through the plateau. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to be making a video on my plateau busting secret, how to bust through any plateau no matter what weight you're at. So anyway, I hope this helped, guys. I hope you're having an amazing Monday, and I'll talk to you soon.